Okay, so I've gotten my pieces out of here that I misted and wrapped overnight of my leather clay that's starting to dry out, but it's not rock hard, leather hard, or bone dry. And then the way that you do it, it's best if you stand up when you're doing it. So I'm going to stand up so I can have some more leverage. And you are going to hold it. The reason I showed the video is because you can see it better since I don't have a good video camera or document camera to show you. But then you just take and you toss it. So warn people in your house. See, this won't stick to this because it's stone. But if you're using your slab mat, you might want to tape it down. And then you just move it around. You can do this outside on concrete as long as you don't get a ton of sticks. I mean, they'll dry out, but it'll make your clay kind of hard to work. Okay, and then you just wedge it back into that ram's head. Now it sticks a little to my stone so I can move it around um, and it, then it will do that and then I can clean that up later. So then you can just make them, I like to make them into balls of clay so that I can reuse them later. And then I just try to put it in the Ziploc that already has some fresh clay in or a new bag. So you should have a bag for reclaiming clay and then a bag of fresh clay. You might have several bags actually, okay? All right, so let's talk about our slab mugs. You should have made one in class with me or on your own, and then let it get leather hard. Okay, so I made this one yesterday at 8.30 at night, okay? So, because I left mine at school and I'm at home today. So you guys were to make a mug, and the way I made this is I put paper towel on a cup and then wrapped it around the form, and then I slipped and scored the base, and then I really smoothed out the rim. I still have a little more smoothing to do inside. And then I let get a leather heart. So you don't want to add a handle until it's leather heart. Now this is a tumbler shape, meaning it's narrower at the base. So once it shrinks a little bit, it'll fit nicely in my hand. And you don't have to add a handle for your social commentary cup. But I want to show you guys a couple different ways that you can add a handle to it. And then the other thing you need to do is um, add on and or carve in your symbols that represent your social commentary. And try not to just write the word of it. Try not to write like obesity or global warming. Try to come up with some school appropriate symbols that you can put on it. And also think about the whole cup form. We looked at the Colin Kaeper Kaepernick and the um, abolitionist against slavery um, image that Michelle Erickson did on her cups yesterday. So, um, or I'm sorry, Tuesday. So please think about the whole form when you're doing it. Okay, and the best stage to carve in or add detail to it is when it's leather hard. So what you should do first is um, before you add the handle, you should do some of the carving, add the handle, let that get leather hard, and then do more because it's hard to add carving once the handle's on it. So when you guys are carving, you guys took home your tools. Sorry, I'm making a lot of noise here. And with your tools, you guys have a wood knife. You should be using the wood knife. You also had a stick from before if it's still not broken. Um, you don't have your needle tool, so you can't even use that, right? The other option is you could um, use the end of a paintbrush or a dull pencil for this. The pencil marks will burn out. But you don't want to carve with something sharp like a knife. You don't want to cut into it, and you don't want those rough lines. So if you were kind of planning out your concept for your piece, then you would just draw or you can kind of mark make on it. And then if you're going to slip and score things onto it, just like with the handle you'll see in a minute, then you would need to um, spray, in, spray it with water and wrap it again so it becomes the same wetness. Because if you add wet clay to leather hard clay and let it dry, in the firing it can separate because the leather hard clay already shrunk. So I'm not going to put my imagery on it. That would take too long. But I'm just going to show you that when the cup is leather hard, that is when it is best to carve and add details to it. So that's just a line. And then we wanna wipe away, I call them clay boogers. Wipe away any clay boogers you have. And then this is um, the stage that you can add in your social commentary imagery and that kind of thing, okay? Also, you can see there's some texture and cracks in there. So if you don't like those, the best way, you can smooth it with your thumb, don't add water. The best way is just to take some soft clay and just fill in the cracks. Now re remember, so if I didn't like what I carved, I can fill it back in again. Remember that I'm adding um, soft or plastic clay to leather hard clay. So after I'm done, I would need to spray this lightly inside and out with water and rewrap it overnight. So it doesn't um, separate from the piece. Okay, so then you can do some of that. And also you guys have in your kit, you have the scoring tool, but you also have 
this scraper tool, that works so well. So if you haven't made your cup yet, what I found last night is um, once I slipped and scored the foot on, I use this to kind of scrape and narrow the base and clean up any of the ridges or edges. It works really good for that. So you guys have that tool as well if you picked up your kit. By the way, if you didn't pick up your kit or more clay, it's at school. And um, I, if you heard me talking to Ceramics 3, you guys can go there anytime between 9 and 3. Just go to the main office and they'll take you to the corral room. And then you can also pick up things like um, your trompe l'oeil pieces, like Luke has a pretzel there, makes me hungry thinking about it. And then um, Cyrus has his tortilla chips and stuff. So um, Gianna has a really pretty plate. So those are available for you guys to pick up too. Okay, so let's talk handles. So if I want to add a handle to the piece, it could be a handle that's functional or a decorative handle. So I know Cyrus yesterday shared with us that he wants to use a handcuff for a handle. That would be really cool, but maybe not super comfortable. So it doesn't have to be a super comfortable fun functional cup. This is a bisque fire cup that I bought and my kid painted. Um, and so this handle, if you can see it, it looks like an ear shape. So I know all of you learned about this because I was there with you, even if you had Miss Martin, and then we were quarantined. But before we were quarantined, we were learning about how to make cups and handles and plates last year or in Ceramics 1, if I had you in Ceramics 1, not last year. So there's a couple ways to make candles. The um, One of the sturdiest and most comfortable is this kind of ear shape. The other handle, this is glass, not ceramic, but the other handle is more like... Um, a C shape, but you'll notice how they're attached to the work is not just end to end. They actually kind of loop forward. So when you make your handles, it's important that you know how to attach them. So at home, um, you can pull a handle. So you guys have a bucket. That is probably the messiest way to do your work to pull a handle. But in class, you learned how to do this and I have a video on it. Um, but I'm not recording me pulling a handle or I'll get fired. Just kidding. <laughs> no, but the handles, you would fill the bucket with water and then you make kind of a coil and then you pull on that and you can form a handle that way. You learned that in my class in Ceramics 1 and I have a video you can watch, okay? Um, I'm going to show you a couple other ways that you guys can make a handle too. So one way to make a handle is with slab and I rolled this out last night when I rolled out the slab for my piece. So if you haven't made your cup yet, if you have extra scraps of slab, you can use this. So what I did is I just cut out an extra cup of slab that's the same thickness as the slab I rolled out. Your slab should be about a pinky thick, okay? That's a good thickness, about a quarter inch, not much thinner or much thicker, okay? So if I'm going to do a slab like this for the handle, you would need a little water or slip. And with that water or slip, you're going to just take and smooth those edges right away. Okay, so you just get your fingertips wet, and then you would just pull on and smooth out the edges. Because if you have sharp edges, they'll be sharp on your hand when you hold your cup. Okay, so just pull on those edges and smooth those out. So that is just one way that you can make a handle. If you choose to make a coil handle, you need to get some fresh clay up just one sec. They tend to be the most, uh, the least comfortable, just so you know. So I'll show you how to flatten that out if you're going to do a coil handle. So I'm going to put this aside, and I'll show you how to attach it in a minute. So for a coil handle, you just would start off by squeezing a coil. And by the way, this is the same way you would make it if you're pulling the handle, right? I'll show you the video on that. Okay. But for a coil handle, you would just take your clay, and you can use your slab mat unless you have a surface. It's just you can't wedge clay in a slab mat. It doesn't work. Um, so then for rolling out the coil, you would start just kind of with that hot dog shape, and then you would go back and forth and move. If you move, then you don't get the flat edges. If your coil does get flat, just put it up on its side and tap it, and then roll it again. So that should be about the thickness of your thumb. You don't want a gigantic handle, or that's uncomfortable to hold. So also, if you have a coil, that is really uncomfortable in your hands. So what you should do is flatten it a little bit, with your hand or with your rolling pin. My rolling pin's non-stick, that's why it's not sticky. Okay, um, and then you guys can use any of your tools to trim off the extra. Okay, so when we, this is similar to the slab piece I did. When we do a handle on our piece, it's a really good idea to cut 45 degree angle. So if you pull a handle, you will remember that we cut that 45 degree angle on um, your piece 
okay? And before you attach it, okay? Now, you can make a really creative handle that is not functional and that goes with your idea. So I think like Luke was gonna do this tree thing, maybe the handle would be a tree. So you guys can get really sculptural, but you might wanna start with just this form and then let it firm up a little bit to leather hard and then add on the sculptural elements to it. So even for like Cyrus's hand cup idea, make the coil form and then attach it and then scrape away or add on details. So I would stick to these two methods or pulling your handle, okay? Let's talk about how to attach that handle. So again, you don't have to add a handle to your cup, but it could add an interesting design element and it's sometimes nice to have a handle. So just pay attention. So the way you would add the handle is you put your hand inside the leather hard cup. Don't try to put a handle on a wet cup, okay? And then I didn't even bring home a sporing tool. So if you don't have yours, you can use a fork. If you use a plastic fork, you can keep reusing it or you can wash a fork. So I've got my slip. And so I find a spot that would work really good on the form and maybe cover, cover up like the seam where you did it or something that's not so nice. And then you want to score and slip both parts, but really get in there and go both directions. Okay, so remember I'm adding wet clay to leather hard clay, so I'm gonna need to spray and wrap this or the handle will come off, okay? So I would do it on the cup form and then I would also do it on my handle, okay? That might be the wrong way, I often do that. Okay, so then this is how you put it on. I'll do the best I can in the video. You don't put it, let me get the little piece of slab one here. You do not put it on end to end. Okay, that will not stay, all right? So you will put it on where you have more surface area. So I take it and I put it on upside down and then I flip it over. See, I did do the wrong side. That's why I did the other side too. Now, I like to test it before I attach the bottom part. So what I mean by that is I like to make sure it's kind of just give it a little push right here. And then I like to stick my fingers in. Remember, it'll shrink about 11% and test it. And if it's not long enough, I might have to roll it thinner or make a bigger handle. Okay, your sponge works really good to go in there and hold it for you too, if you wanna try that. And then once you've got it in a good position and it's straight, then you can go in and really attach the handle on the outside, make sure you're using really good craftsmanship. Okay, and then on this part, on the interior, and then it's always a good idea to put a little bit of thick slip or clay right here too, and really attach it, okay? And then this is the time you would go and clean up the rim, clean up the foot, write your name and class shape on the bottom, and then decide if you want to add any more design elements. You can also add design elements when you guys um, decorate them with underglaze or glaze, but carving or adding something into your form will be a really good idea. So after you add any details, a handle, anything you slip and score on the piece, you need to lightly spray it with water and wrap it back in your Ziploc, okay? And don't forget your symbols that will go on the piece. So that's kind of a little bit about handles. I'm gonna stop recording here for a sec. Hold on, let me get to the right screen here, sorry. It's really awkward doing it this way. I tried to do it on my phone, but that didn't work well too, oops. I don't wanna share my screen, I want to stop recording. Stop recording.